we're going to move on to our next speaker now, Ming Cheng, and he is a he is someone who can do everything. <laughs> so he's an architect, a town planner, urban design, and educator. So he's going to be presenting here today with his students from the LSA who are um, answering a brief on spatial justice. So his students today are Aaron and Isa, um, Aaron, Isa, Freddie, George, Steph, Shalini, and San. Thank you, Carl. And uh, also thank you, uh, Dr. Khan Patel as well. Um, um, Perhaps, you know, just to give a bit of introduction about myself. Uh, well, my name is Ming Cheng. I'm, I'm a charter architect. I'm a charter town planner, urban designer, and one of the co-founders of the Asian Architect Association. And uh, like Carl, you know, I probably share many of his experience when trying to find a job or actually trying to move up my career ladder. So, uh, you know, uh, solidarity there. Uh, I've been practicing in the UK for about 20 years, uh, mainly in the private practice. I uh, just started my new practice called Place Profile with two other colleagues based in the UK and the US. Uh, I'm also a design tutor at the Barclay School of Planning at UCL, uh, University of Suffolk, and at the London School of Architecture. Um, and this is actually what uh, we actually want to talk about. You know. At the LSA, uh, we actually have the part two program, uh, and how we teach is probably different to, to a more conventional architecture school. We play great emphasis you know, on the balance between academic and practical experience. Hence, the, the students on the first year will be placed with a practice to work three days a week to gain practical experience and then working, and then working on their academic projects for two days. And we also uh, put a very great emphasis on studying the urban scale. Uh, we use, because we're actually based in, in London, in, in, in the borough of Hackney. So we actually use London as our test bed and we are, and we also really uh, interested in explore the social, economic, and political issue that actually affect our spatial environment. Uh, the projects you're about to see is a cumulative six months of research, you know, th through two modules that uh, these students have been um, studying, notably the one module called Design Cities, and also another module called the Design Think Tank. And the theme of the Design Think Tank uh, is called Spatial Justice. Is, in, is developed in collaboration with an architecture firm, DSDHA, and also colleagues at the, at the, uh, at the LSA. It has not been an easy subject to explore. Um, it has been a quite, at times, you know, difficult to discuss some of the issue, and especially you know, with the context with an architectural project. I mean, after all, you know, how can we address this issue of spatial justice through a spatial intervention? So I'm going to pass on to Aaron and Isa, and they will tell you more about the projects. Thank you very much. Thank you both for the introduction. We're really excited and honored to be presenting our work today. So our design think tank project uh, explored the themes of racial justice, spatial equity, community care, and city ownership. And our journey began in the London Fields area of Hackney in East London. Our research found that uh, Black, Brown and minority centered community organizations have historically been spatially vulnerable to the whims of a capitalist government suffering from unjust evictions, cultural erasure and economic vulnerability despite the essential support that they provide within their communities. In response to this, we have worked collaboratively and intersectionally to co-produce a new community and cultural infrastructure, building on lost histories, supporting existing groups and enabling community growth and resilience for the future. Our project proposes an alternative model of self and collective care for community groups to provide self-reliance and independence from local governance. As we are grappling with topics such as race and power, we outline our own intersections to define our positionality in relation to the project. So as a group, our diverse identity markers have brought our own perspective to the project. Some of us are working directly within the communities that we are part of and unfortunately know firsthand what it's like to not be seen, heard or represented within our built environment. 
we have worked with the architectural office, the SDHA, um, as our design think tank leaders and our mentors, Alicia, Alessandro and Ming, who were also an important part of the project. As we know, space and race are, intrin are intrinsically linked. We want to run through some of the literature um, and quotes from those in the industry uh, working at the intersections of race and justice, which have underpinned our work. So spatial justice as a concept um, can partly be broken down into the spatial manifestation of five key types of justice, restorative justice, distributive justice, epistemic, procedural, and similarly distributive justice. Um, Edward Sawyer, one of the most prominent authors on the topic, reminds us that spatial injustices and the creation of lasting spatial structures of privilege and advantage are fundamentally produced through um, what he calls locational discrimination, which are essentially informed by biases and strongly shaped by gender, class, and race. The architect and novelist Leslie Loco casts lights on the historical exclusion of Black people in the creation and appreciation of architecture, a conversation she deems is deserving of more attention across the architectural profession. Uh, Amara Spence, who's the founder of uh, Amaya and also behind the Black Men and Spatial Justice Fund, talks about the link between um, injustices Black people experience being rooted in historical land and space inequalities and some of the radical ways in which Black communities have preserved, celebrated, and amplified their space through the history of community land trusts and cooperatives. And she calls for new and bold infrastructure and radical reclamations of space. So along with all these different influences and theories, um, what really formed the basis of our project was our research into the racial injustices in Hackney, which we'll now speak about. Um, so we mapped all the a lot of different accounts of injustices as a way to spatialize them in space and time. And we found that a lot of them were racial and they were commonly um, the evictions, murders and erasure of black, brown and minority communities. We then traced the spatial activism which happened in retaliation or as a way to combat these injustices. And this was normally the formation of a group, organization or charity working at the intersections of race, sexuality and class for equity and inclusion. And um, this is something I can relate to um, from myself, the importance of grassroots organizations in my life. As a queer South Asian person, my identity is not so much represented in mainstream society and the discrimination and covert racism and homophobia in healthcare institutions and other spaces has meant that I've relied a lot on groups working to offer more accessible therapy, queer POC events working to combat a lack of visibility and even queer religious groups providing safe spaces away from the homophobic and transphobic exclusion that can be felt in these spaces. And these are injustices which these grassroots organizations are really fighting hard against. Um, but then we found that a lot of these groups and spaces are usually evicted, shut down, demolished, or just economically vulnerable, and reflecting how capitalism and institutional racism can erase these essential groups of color and other minorities. So moving on to our first intervention, we wanted to raise awareness of all these injustices and show that they are spatialized. So we created a series of posters, which were used to take over the London Fields neighborhood. Uh, this intervention brought light to lost community spaces like the Four Aces Music Club, a space which celebrated Black music and culture and was a space of support for newly arrived migrants. Centerprise Bookstore, a collective which brought together many different minority communities to create, self-publish and work together, also a space that was evicted. Um, we visualized hidden histories of colonized Asian women who are a big part of Hackney's history but unmentioned and forgotten, and highlighted cases of police brutality in the area. We questioned the council on their treatment of an eviction of the group Sister Space, a group which, which provides essential support to black women suffering with domestic abuse. And our posters briefly renamed streets and buildings, which were named after John Cass, something Hackney's community are already engaged in doing. And we're in the process of putting these on a new Instagram account. So if you want to find out more, you can follow us and see all that information. 
And now we have a video which we'd like to show you to explain our proposal in more depth. The film explores the issue of spatial justice and the creation of a new infrastructure of cultural, social and community spaces based on equity, inclusivity and mutual aid. Black Lives Matter and activism against racial injustice have become the largest social movement in the last decade. Across the world, deconstructing colonial legacies and institutional racism became the preoccupation of many. But only now are we starting to talk about social justice from a spatial lens, questioning who we celebrate and elevate in our built environment, and alternatively, who we silence and erase. In Hackney, we've mapped over a dozen accounts of spatial injustice in the last century, with key community hubs being wiped away and the very communities that make up the area ending up completely disregarded. Despite the rich diversity of the area, Ethnic minorities remain disproportionately affected by a decade of austerity. These inequalities have been further exposed by the pandemic, exposing extreme poverty, lack of community support, job insecurity, and unaffordable housing. A network of clubs, such as the Four Aces in Thorston, gave exposure to the new London bands. Design and architecture are not neutral. They can be complicit in propagating and sedimenting systems of oppression. As designers, we believe we must do more to fight systematic inequalities. We cannot continue this way. It's time for change. It's time for Hacking Hackney. Our vision is to reclaim the streets, spaces and power in Hackney and place it into the hands of diverse communities of colour. We are offering a new model for a moving, adaptable, multi-layered, iterative network based on an alternative notion of land ownership, working at different scales and temporality. Organisations are connected in a cooperative structure of mutual aid and support funded by a community wealth fund. A community land trust acquires and distributes spaces to reflect the individual needs of each organisation or community. Here are some of the stories. Straker Station currently a bus depot allocated for residential development by Hackney Council, is a central node of the governing Community Land Trust. The existing structure of the station provides flexibility, allowing the building to adapt according to funding and need. It's a common space run by the community and works to coordinate resources for mutual aid, capacity building, leadership and community resilience. To build intergenerational connections, there are spaces for communal cooking and the maker studios, which activate and help steward the central space. Celebration and exchange are fostered by negotiation over the central public realm. The station also works as a community group incubator, providing space for support and training. However, the station is not the end product, but serves to support the fleet of mobile programmes and wider network. Both the mobile programmes and station play an important role. This is the case for Account, a research group looking at policing in Hackney. This image shows the float visiting Urswick School, hosting a transformative justice workshop between young people and the police, where grievances can be shared. Account's recent report highlights how workshops should be held in many locations and perhaps through a movable venue like a bus, allowing a localised service. The report also highlights the need for a third space, separate to the council, run by local residents who are paid to build trust, resilience and cohesion between generations. This meant passive surveillance was a key driver of the station's design, with easy overlooking built in to the group incubator offices. Lawa is the only refuge against gender-based violence in Europe that is by and for Latin American women. Currently, Lauer's base provides emergency accommodation, therapy and community support. In the hub, they will benefit from a celebration space hosting their events. It will offer workshop spaces and a safe space for the Changemaker project. This space also operates as a dance studio, costume workshop and print shop. 
Lowers Float allows women and children to come together and get free legal support along with cultural workshops. It is a celebration of black and Latin culture through dance, music and food. In collaboration with Sister Space, the float also acts as a cover that will allow women and children in need to have access to essential support services. The mobile structure also aims to cast light on the spatial injustice faced by specialized domestic violence charities. Sister Space was created following the brutal murder of Valerie Ford, which highlighted the need for specific domestic violence services for black women. Sister Space remained in unsafe premises in Clapton for five years before being temporarily relocated to Mare Street. After months of dispute and despite strong community support, Sister Space were evicted from their Mare Street premises on January 17th, with the council failing to provide them a safe space. There has been strong community support for facilities for Sister Space to be included in the redevelopment of 55 Morning Lane as an alternative to the council plans. Our proposal will therefore be developed on this site, forming part of our CLT Justice Reinvestment Strategy. Developed following engagement with Sister Space, our design offers a safe, protected and discreet space for the charity on a ground floor unit of the Morning Lane site. Its facade contains frosted glass motifs, inspired by those found in traditional Gurunzi houses across West Africa, as well as sister space symbols, acting as discrete indicators of the refuge. The space is designed to be rather flexible, to ensure sister space can adapt it to their needs. It offers new offices, an openable group activity space, as well as more secluded spaces for individual counseling and respite. It also contains an intimate living room space, providing constant access and support to the survivors. By contrast, the hub acts as the public face of Sister Space, where, in collaboration with LAWA, they can engage in domestic violence awareness, public workshops, and offer legal advice to a larger audience. Instigated by our mobile interventions, our next design proposals reclaim vacant spaces for celebration and healing. This becomes the Cutie BIPOC Fashion Network, spaces that are co-created with queer and trans POC groups and artists working with decolonial art and fashion techniques. The float finds and reappropriates these empty spaces. The float is centred around a core workshop space inspired by the programmes of Centerprise and the women's anarchist Nuance Cafes, providing therapy, making space, and stages. When the float leaves, its elements remain to form more permanent events. In this space, a weekly queer and trans POC fashion celebration takes place. The event engages groups which are working with reclaiming the queer and trans identity through fashion and celebration of the body. Inside, flexible design elements allow groups to create the space with full agency, whether it is for a celebration or a pop-up retail space. As well as celebration, our network provides essential support and care through making. Here, the existing London College of Fashion workshop are used for an event called Stitches in Time, a collective weaving workshop which provides community support for black, brown and minority women who may be suffering domestic abuse or other injustices. The plan shows the float instigating this collaboration. The elements of the float spill out into the public front. The workshop is happening inside the London College of Fashion and the collective weaving is displayed outside. Our network means that smaller queer and trans exclusive spaces exist in Hackney for separatist celebration and care, whilst the Straker Station is a space where queer and trans groups, activists and artists can choose to be visible and have an integral presence in their wider communities. In the station is a larger version of the structure used to It means that all groups can come together and collectively weave their languages and stories. The collective woven tapestries are displayed, along with a community-made fabric tree, symbolising setting down new collective roots. Our next design proposal pays tribute to the once famous and vibrant Four Aces Club on Dalston Lane. Beyond the temporary occupation of space, our proposal looks at claiming back assets of community value as part of the land trust. In this instance, we look at the Four Aces float being used as part of the infrastructure to take over a commercial unit in its former site. The float dismantles into key areas such as a prominent archway, cloakroom, kids' parent dance floor and a bar. The rave is used as an alternative and underground occupation of space. It begins on digital platforms where users of the said apps will be alerted of the location of the rave.
At the site of the rave, a motif would appear and people would begin to arrive, but they can also easily disperse as and when they would need to. The role of the hub would be to act as a base for the runnings of the resurgence of the four races. It would also host the pirate radio station, highlighting upcoming local Hackney artists in the scene. Our next intervention tackles reappropriating and distributing cultural artefacts and histories to create a landscape of culture that extends beyond the traditional museum model embracing the idea of spatial justice. Our float aims to communicate a more truthful historical account by having a mobile workshop that liberates the stolen artefacts and celebrates their return. As part of the float's journey, it travels to Hackney Town Hall celebrating the return of cultural artefacts to their countries of origin, as well as hosting workshops surrounding the hidden histories of the artefacts and cultures. Working in collaboration with the Museum of Homes, we are reappropriating its courtyard space. As part of our plan to subvert the symbolism expressed by colonial statues, which are currently dominant markers within our public space, Spaces, such as the statue of Robert Jeffrey at the Museum of the Homes. The ongoing story of the museum is depicted by a mural showing the past and present histories of the museum, celebrating the change in spatial dominance, as well as reintroducing the original intentions of the museum, which had a large focus on shared workshop spaces to help promote skilled craftsmanship. Items created within these workshops will be exhibited as part of our street interventions around Hackney, allowing the local community to be part of the curation process. Our street intervention reactivate an active public space by transforming them into information points using photography, murals and more. This becomes the Exploded Museum and these interventions are connected via a timeline started from the Museum of the Home. There are three types of interventions. First, high tackles transforming spaces that still display colonial statues to interactive exhibition spaces. The second type uncovers hidden story with Hackney Naming Hub to reflect on the contribution of a wider range of community to Hackney. For example, the Ayas were Asian nannies hired by colonial families during the passage from India to Britain. On arrival to Britain, they were abandoned. A shelter opened in 1901 at 26 King Edward Road. The Ayers were able to seek shelter and a return passage. The third tie works in collaboration with Hackney Museum. We propose to liberate its archive collection currently hidden out of the public eye by distributing the information throughout the street. To sustain this project financially, we are also distributing a series of souvenir shops to generate income. The Straker Station is a central location to stage regular exhibitions of works. It is a space for learning and sharing and respect between the different groups. We are bringing story of the past and present to the public realm. We aim to build on community resilience that can then assist our culture and voices to travel to location beyond Hackney. Our Our vision for the future future is a secure and growing network of community-owned spaces and interventions existing on different timescales to create a resilient and intersectional network for racial equity in the city. Thank you for listening.